Hello, I'm Phil, and this is the pre-lab instructional video for the Binary Stars Lab. So what we'll be doing today is we will be studying uh, the orbital motion of binary stars, but since stars are really large and we can't fit them in our lab, we'll be doing this with little metal pucks on an air table, and instead of using the gravitational force, we will be using the force from a spring. So, the first thing we need to do is to measure the spring constant of this spring. And for that, you will use this little device here. So what you need to do is get your spring and hook the little loop over the hook. Then you'll need a weight hanger, which has the mass written on here, even though it's not a bad idea to check out what the mass is just to be safe. Hook this guy on the other loop and let it hang naturally. So when it's here, you can see that the gravitational force, mg, is being balanced by the force from the spring, k times x. So, uh, what you need to do is measure where the uh, rest length uh, is right here on this ruler that comes standard on this. Now, uh, you need to put a small mass on the weight hanger. So, the mass is written on top of here. You can check the weight on the, on the balance if you need to. So, adding some mass will now make it fall a little bit lower. So, now you have a delta mass and a delta distance. And from these two things, you can figure out the spring constant from the equation in your manual. Now, the next thing is to go over and start playing with the actual pucks. Now, the way these work is that this is hooked up to electricity, and there is a uh, there are some holes where air will be uh, spit out so that these things can hover just like air hockey pucks. Now there's also a little plunger in the center uh, and when you activate this spark generator here with a little foot pedal that's down below it will actually push a little plunger that will uh, press against a piece of paper which you'll, put, which you'll put down here and touch the carbon paper here to make little black dots. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Now what you need to do is you need to just hook up your spring to the little leads that are on here and make sure they're secure so they don't fall off when you're orbiting these little pucks around. Okay, And once you have that set up, now you need to turn on the power which will power the air pump and the spark generator. I, I, I'll leave it now so it doesn't get all noisy. And then take some practice runs of making orbits of these pucks. So what you need to do is hold them a little bit apart and try to make them uh, have some circular motion, except push them gently in one direction. So I'll just give you an example of what it should look like here. Okay, so you hold them apart and you'll push them so they orbit. Like so. Now there are a couple things that you'll want to know to keep safe. Uh, so there is a little metal chain in this tube here which uh, gives current to this thing. So when this is running and when you have the spark generator on, you don't want to be touching this and closing the circuit between your body and all the other stuff here. Also, you don't want to be touching the table with any part of your body when the spark generator is on, otherwise you might get a nasty little shock. Okay? Also, don't be playing with this thing and holding it up to your friends and yourself or you might live to regret it. So. Uh, when, you, when you feel comfortable with making all these little orbits with this thing, then it's time to actually uh, collect your data. So, we'll take a piece of this spark paper, just plain white paper, and you'll place it on top of the carbon paper, the black paper there. Okay. Now, when this is all set, the first thing you need to do before you actually uh, start these guys spinning is you need to measure the rest length of this spring. So you don't want it to be really far apart, you don't want it to be uh, so it's compressed. You just want it to be where it's naturally not compressed or elongated. So somewhere about, about there. And again you'll need to turn on the switch and turn on the spark generator and you'll just, you just hold it here in place and uh, give it a few sparks just so that it measures the rest length are not. Okay. Now, when you have that, bring it to a, a, the other corner of the table so that this, uh, these two markings won't interfere with what you're doing next. Then you'll turn everything on and actually take your data. So, 
What you need to do, again, make sure you're not touching these guys and just hold on to these black plastic things so that make sure you don't get shocked. As you turn it on and you start them spinning and just as you let go, you need to start the spark timer with the foot pedal. Now, these will go and they'll orbit around and around and make sure you turn, uh, take your foot off of the pedal to stop the marks before it hits the other side. Okay? Uh, if it hits here, then things will start to bounce around and you won't be able to tell which marks are the marks you want. Okay, so I'll just show you an example of how this goes. Okay, rest length. Turn it on. There's R not. And just a reminder, when you set these things in motion, you want to make sure that they don't hit each other as they're going along in their orbit. Okay? So once this is all done and everything is shut off, you can take your paper and you can start your measurements. Now, your orbits might come out, come out looking like a few different types of uh, shapes here. So if it looks something like this, you might want to redo it because you want to make sure you have a nice, circular, or nice elliptical orbit that's easy to follow which uh, puck is going where. So here it's kind of hard to see what's going on. Here's another example. Uh, this is a little bit better, but uh, now you have a lot of your points getting in really close here, so it's kind of hard to see what's going on. So uh, the ultimate goal is to get something that looks kind of like this. Now here you can see one end, there's a puck here that starts here, a puck that starts here, and they go in this kind of pattern like this. Okay? So it's, kind of, it's much easier to see what's going on. Now, the first thing you'll need to do is to index the dots. Now, if you have a lot of dots that are close together, it's okay to, to go to every, say, third or maybe even fifth dot if you're using uh, really high spark rates. Um, so let's just assume we're going to use every third dot here. So you start at one here and call that zero. You start at one here and call that zero. Okay, this is zero for one puck and zero for the other puck. Now you count, okay, uh, one, two, three, for example. Here's going to be one, one, two, three, here's going to be two. Now, this can get really confusing if you uh, use everything the same color, so I would recommend using different colors for the different puck trajectories. So, for example, call one of them blue, there's zero, one, two, for example, and maybe yellow for the other one. Here's zero for this guy, zero, one, two, three, there's one, two, three, two, zero, one, and even writing the numbers in different colors can help. So, once you have that set up, the next thing you'll need to do is to measure the, uh, is, to, is to actually match the pairs up because you are going to do a, uh, we are going to uh, measure the center of mass motion of these, of these pucks as they travel along the line down in this direction. So, you'll want to match up the zeros and the ones, or sorry, the zeros and the zeros the ones and the ones, like this, and the twos and the twos, and the threes and the threes, and so on and so forth. Now, you notice that this is kind of going back and forth a little bit, so that might be something you need to throw out later. But uh, there should be, when you go through this, uh, a bulk motion of the center of mass of these two pucks moving in a, a more or less straight line. Okay. Now, the next thing you'll need to do is you actually need to measure the distance that has been traveled between each of these successive dots, or the time indices. So you'll take out your ruler, and you'll measure the distance from here to here, from zero to one, and you'll measure the distance one to two, like that. You don't need to actually draw these lines each time, you just need to measure the distance, but uh, measure the distance and keep track of these in a table somewhere, and you also know uh, how much time has passed between these because the spark generator uh, uh, was set to whatever you set it to before, either 10 hertz, 20 hertz, or something like that. And from there you can get the time between these uh, successive dots. Okay. So from the distance and the time you can calculate the velocity. So what we want to do is we want to calculate the velocity along, each of, uh, along this line for each of these pucks. So calculate the velocities along puck 1, the velocities for puck 2, and that is all you need to do for that. 
Now, one final thing you'll need to do for this is to measure the, the uh, separation R. Remember, before we measured R0, the, the uh, initial separation between the two pucks. So now we want to measure the separation R at each point along these things. So uh, the distance from uh, point 0 to point 0 for, for uh, uh, these points will be the R at this time. Then you'll measure the R from 1 to 1 at that time. Then R from 2 to 2 at that time. And so on and so forth, all the way down. And from these things, you can, you can calculate the kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared, the potential energy, which comes from a spring, which would be k times uh, delta x squared. And you can compare the two and see how they interact along the way down.